Yo, what's up guys? So in this uh, video, what we're going to do is we're going to graph this polynomial function here that's in factored form. So x plus 1 times 2x minus 1 times x minus 4. And we're going to go through these six steps here to graph it. So the first step is we have to find its degree. And its degree, you can easily tell if you count all the x's that the degree is going to be 3. But to show it in a more proper way, Let's, uh, let's take each leading term or each leading x term. So in this bracket, it's x to the power of 1 because there's no exponent uh, attached to the x. And then this whole bracket is to the power of 1. So that first bracket is x to the power of 1 to the power of 1. Here, this is x to the power of 1, and this bracket is to the power of 1. So that would be x to the power of 1 to the power of 1 and x to the power 1 again, and this whole bracket is to the power 1. So I sound like a broken record, but uh, that's x to the power 1 to the power of 1. So each of these represent the x terms in the brackets. So if we simplify this, we would have x to the power 1 times x to the power of 1 times x to the power of 1 if we multiply these ones together, and this would be x to the power of 3. So we can tell that the degree is equal to 3. This x cubed is going to be part of the leading term if we were to take these brackets and foil them and expand them. Step 2, let's find what the leading coefficient is if we were to take this uh, factored form polynomial and expand it. And the way that we do that is we just take the leading coefficient in each bracket. So the leading coefficient in the first bracket, there's like this 1 in front of the x and we take it to the power of whatever that bracket is to the power of. So it's 1 to the power of 1. The leading coefficient of this bracket is this 2 here, so that would be 2 to the power of 1. And the leading coefficient of this bracket is 1, so it would be 1 to the power of 1. So, uh, simplifying these, 1 to the power of 1 is 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2, 1, and then multiplying these out, you get 1 times 2 times 1, which is 2. So that there is our leading coefficient. So we know that if we were to take this polynomial and expand it, the first term or the leading term would be 2x cubed. Right, the leading coefficient of 2 and the x cubed because it has this whole uh, polynomial function has a degree of 3, so the uh, highest exponent is going to be 3. Another thing I want you to notice is notice the difference of how we found both of these. When we're finding the degree, we're just dealing with the x's. Right, we're not, we don't care about whatever the leading coefficient is, we just care about what power the x is to, and then taking that bracket to the power of, or taking that x to the power of whatever the bracket is to the power of. And then when we're finding the leading coefficient, we don't care about the x values or whatever the x is to the power of, we just care about what the leading coefficient in each bracket is, hence the 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, and 1, and then we take these to the power of whatever each bracket is to the power. So make sure you're aware of the difference of how we're finding both of those. Now step 3, finding the end behavior. We know that the degree is 3, so it's odd. We know the leading coefficient is 2, so it's positive. And when you have an odd degree and a positive leading coefficient, if you review your notes from the end behavior video, we know that the polynomial function is going to start in quadrant 3 and then end in quadrant 1. So the end behavior is quadrant 3 to 1. Step 4, we have to find the y-intercept. Really simple, just plug in x is equal to 0 for this polynomial function. So when we plug in 0 for x, we'd have positive 1 in this bracket. 2 times 0 is 0, and then minus 1 is negative 1, and then 0 minus 4 is negative 4. So multiplying all these out, you'd get 1 times negative 1 times negative 4, which would be positive 4. So the y-intercept is positive 4 for this polynomial function. So if we were to take this, expand it, foil it, then the constant term or the term at the end would be positive 4. 
Then step five, we have to find the x-intercepts. To find the x-intercepts, we have to plug in zero for y. And because this is already in factored form, it's super easy to find the x-intercepts. You just have to find when does each bracket equal zero. So let's start off with the first bracket. x plus one is equal to zero when x is equal to negative one. 2x minus one is equal to zero when x is equal to bring the one over. So 2x equals one, divide both sides by two when x is equal to one half. And then x minus four, uh, running out of room here. So x minus four is equal to zero when x is equal to four. So an x value of negative one, x value of a half, and an x value of four, those are your three x intercepts. And now we're ready to graph. So let's go through graphing this. Now to graph it, you really only need parts three, four, and five. Steps one and two, to find the degree and leading coefficient, we just use those to really find what the end behavior of this polynomial would be. But once you have the end behavior, once you have the y-intercept, once you have the x-intercepts, you don't need any other information. You can graph it uh, pretty accurately. So let's label some stuff here. So let's start off with the y-intercept. Y-intercept is four, so we know that there's gonna be a point here that the polynomial function will go through. So this point here is zero and four. And then let's label these x-intercepts. So an x value of negative one, let's put right here. An x value of a half would be somewhere here. And then an x value of four, let's put all the way out there. Now, this is not necessarily to scale. All that really matters, all that I'm looking for is that you know what these labels are, right? So the y-intercept of four, the x-intercept of negative one, of a half and positive four. Actually, instead of putting zero and four here, let's just put a four for this point so it doesn't uh, interrupt our graph. Now, the end behavior, part three, quadrant three to quadrant one. So when we're reading from left to right, we know that this polynomial function is gonna start in quadrant three, which is this quadrant here, and it's going to end in quadrant one. So it's gonna have opposite end behaviors. And then from there, you can just sort of draw this. So negative, it goes through negative one, it goes through four as well, then it goes through a half, it goes through four, and then, you know what, let's put this arrow somewhere here, like that. So, uh, starts in quadrant three, goes through an x-intercept of negative one, then it goes through a y-intercept of four, goes through an x-intercept of a half, goes through an x-intercept of four, and then ends in quadrant one. And that's approximately how this polynomial function would look like. And we graphed it by using the end behavior, the y-intercept, and the x-intercepts. Now, this graph, just as a note, is not entirely accurate. Like, we don't know where this minimum point will be. It might be turning down there. It might be turning a little bit higher. We also don't know when we would hit this maximum point. We don't have the tools to do that. All that really matters, though, is that you go through the right intercepts, the right x-intercepts, and the y intercepts and that you get the correct end behaviors down and then you should get full marks when graphing.